I want to begin by just saying a word, word of prayer. Father God, I thank you so much for who you are. I thank you because you are God, our Father, our Creator, you're mighty and you're sovereign. There is no other God like you. I thank you because you have been protecting us and watching over us. You've been sending your angels, oh God, to walk beside us, in front of us, behind us, just surrounding us, oh God. And we are thankful for what you have done. Let us always have a grateful heart. Don't let us be too quick to forget what you have done and what you are doing. And we look forward to what you're going to do in our future, oh God. I pray for all those who are on this video, God. I pray that the words that you have given me to share with them will encourage their hearts and that those who may not know you, that they will be convicted by the words that comes from my mouth. Use me as a vessel, O oh God. Have your way. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Again, I want to thank you for being here. And today I just want to maybe share a little of my testimony. I was in my early 20s when I accepted Christ. I didn't always do things the right way. I grew up in the church. I did. I grew up in the church, Christian parents. And and you know how that is. My mom was a minister and you know how uh, kids can get rebellious when they've been in church all their life. And then when they finally get up to some age to where they can do what they want to do, they kind of stray away. But I praise God because I did have a praying mother and eventually I found my way back to the Lord. I don't claim to be a Bible scholar, but I do study and the Lord gives me insight on what I am reading. I love the word. I love the word of God. I love studying it. I love digging deep into the word of God. I mean, being on the surface is okay for a while, but when you want to find out more and more about God, you just want to dig deep into it. And so he has given me that desire. And he has also given me a desire to pray for the unbelievers and the believers, because as believers, we need strengthening and we need encouraging. I thank God because the word, when I read in Psalms where it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. It takes the word to keep you on track with God. It also said in Psalms, it said, Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes. Now, how will I be able to know what God's statutes or his commandments are unless I read the word? We can't guess at it. We, we know, we do know when we're doing right and we know when it's wrong because our conscience convict us. But it's so much in this word that we need to know. It says, give me understanding that I could keep your law. It's no need in reading per se, unless you understand what you're reading. And understanding comes from you asking God to give you the insight and the understanding of what you're reading. If you don't get the understanding, it's just like a bunch of words on the page. And, and sometimes if it's depending on which version of the Bible you're reading from, you can really get confused. But you have to still, you know, keep at it and keep at it. And as you pray, if you pray before you read, God will open up the word to you. I found out that every answer to every question is in the word. We just have to search it out. Everything that you need to know is in this word of God. We just need to take time to search it out. I believe that when we read the word, we need to ask the question, how does this particular verse or how does this particular word, how can I apply it to my life? What does this have to do with me? And as you dissect the word, as you rightly divide the word, you will find out that every scripture in this book, you can apply it to your life. Some way, somehow, it can be a part of your life. 
I found out that the word guides me. It gives me direction. That's why in Psalms it say, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If it wasn't for the word, I will always be walking in the wrong direction. I will always be walking in the darkness. But there's no need in reading it and getting understanding if you're going to continue to do what you want to do the way you want to do it. God wants you to be successful in your Christian walk. He doesn't want anybody to fail during their Christian walk. He doesn't want anybody to be lost. He, he has made it simple for us, but somehow we have gotten a hold of it and have made it more complex or more difficult than it really is supposed to be. Living a Christian life should consist of a life of happiness, of joy. When he came, he came to give us abundant life, life that we can enjoy. Not saying that you won't encounter some difficult times you not saying that you won't have it a uh, tough sometimes, but knowing that God is in control of everything, everything, not just some things. He's in control of everything that should give us some reassurance. We have to get the confidence in God, trust him enough to know that he's going to take care of the problem. See, sometimes we try to take care of it ourselves and we, we just want to hold on to it. We don't want to release it unto him. And when we do that, we make more of a mess with it <laughs> than it would have been if we had just left it alone. But the word guides us. The word teaches us. The word shows us everything that we need to know about life and about God. Sometimes we'll find ourselves reading a particular verse. Well, sometimes I'll find myself reading a verse and I'll get an understanding of it. The next day I can go back to the same verse and read it again and get a new revelation of that same verse that I just read yesterday. And even months down the road, when I, when I read that verse again, God has given me a new revelation of that same verse that I read a couple months ago, but then I had a different understanding of it. You see, we limit God. We limit God. God is, <laughs> he is so big that there's no way we're going to understand all of him. But we can understand him to a point to where, number one, we know he loves us. Number two, he wants us to prosper. He wants us to be successful. He wants our soul to be prosper, And he wants us to be healed and wants us to be delivered out of the hands of the enemy. That's why he sent Jesus. The word tells us everything that we need to know. And you also find that when you read a verse, that sometimes those verses are not meant to stand alone. And what I mean by that is we have to read the verse before it or the verse before that one or the verse after it or the verse after that one or the whole, the entire chapter. Maybe we have to search in a different book to get the full understanding of that. And that when you read in the Old Testament, a lot of the Old Testament is really showing us things that's going to happen in the New Testament. Or even in the, the times we live in, in now. So you can't, all verses are not meant to be stood alone or standalone verses. We have to search it, rightly dividing it, keeping it in, good, in the right context. And that entails us reading the verses before it, the verses after it, the verses around it, and not just be stationary on that one verse. You see, all scripture is God breathed. In other words, it was God that gave the writers the inspiration to write in the book. It's God ordained. And when, he, when it was inspired by men to write the book, God gave them the words to say. 
and it's profitable or it's useful for us today. It's useful for the teaching, for correction, for instruction and training, teaching us how to live righteous lives. And the word equips us for the purpose of God. You want to know what your purpose is? Read the word. It will show you what your purpose is. Your purpose is to read the word, follow what the word says, follow the commandments of God, do the right thing, go out and tell others about Christ. That's your purpose. Bringing in lost souls unto Christ. Now, the way that you do that is going to be different than the way that I do it. But the ultimate purpose is to go out and to bring souls into the kingdom. The word gives us hope. When we see, when it seems as if we have nothing to look forward to, we may not see the full plan of God, but when we find out that he thought of us before we were even born, that he had everything laid out for us before we ever, were ever thought of, that gives us hope because we know that God is a God who loves us and who cares about us. Who, who makes ways for us, who keeps us in a good place. I remember reading in Nehemiah when um, Ezra, the priest, had gotten up to read the word to the people. And it was, it was the law of Moses that he was reading to the people uh, in Nehemiah's days. And how, of course, the people stood up. They reverenced the word by standing up. And those people were there for hours just listening to Ezra read that word because they were so hungry to find out what it was that was in that word. And see, with us, we have to develop that, get that hunger back, get that thirsting back to learn more about God, to learn more about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We have to get the hunger back, the thirsting back. And these people in Nehemiah's days were so hungry and thirsty, they spent hours just listening to the word being read. And they were there as the other priest was walking through the crowd and just teaching them. If they heard a word they didn't understand, then the priest was there to give them that understanding. And so God has placed in our midst today teachers, pastors who can explain the word to us, but not it's no need in explaining it to us if we're not going to follow it. That's why we have to hunger and thirst after God. So they will get the understanding. And then um, after they heard the word and they found out something in that word that Israel was reading and they started telling them about how the Israelites would celebrate uh, by having, by putting booths up, you know, just to uh, remember the day that that God took care of them when they was in the wilderness, and so they they had they start, and so what they did is they started putting booths up and started celebrating that because this was something they did they did not know at the time. And they was just so excited to do that. And see, the word is supposed to excite us. And when we find something in the word that we didn't know was there, we should be excited about it. And we should start, you know, doing what we have been, what God has instructed us to do from that word. And these people were so excited about that. And they found out, you know what? We haven't been doing that. So what is it in the word that you haven't been doing? What is in the word that we have not been doing? Well, we will not know the answer to that until we start digging in the word. And once we get in that word, we would learn of God, learn more of God. We will grow. The Bible tells us to hide the word in our hearts so we won't sin against God. The word teaches us truth. It teaches us the will of God. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. How are we going to know the truth if we don't ever get in the word? The word is truth. It can't be disputed. It can't be refuted. It's truth. It's fact. 
I believe that every key to life is in that word. And God has given us the key to unlock the door of the word. Unlocking that door to the word brings us into the knowledge of Christ. Unlocking that door to the word brings us to a place of growth. Unlocking that key to the word gives us a better understanding of the Holy Spirit and what his job is and what he does to help us while we're walking on this earth. So as as newborn babes, as, as, as newborn babes desire the milk, we as Christians need to desire the word. When we are just starting out, we can only take so much, then we learn. But as we grow, we're able to take more and understand it more. The scripture says this, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Desire the milk of the word, hunger, thirst for the milk of the word that you can grow. Why are we not growing in Christ? Because we're not studying the word. Why are we not growing in Christ? Because we're not digging deep into that word of God. When we dig deep and get off the surface, when when Christ told uh, Peter, launch out into the deep, he's telling us today, launch out into the deep, into the depth of this word so that you can grow. Do this one thing. Plant the seed of the word in your heart. When you plant the seed, the seed is going to grow up. And you're going to notice, oh, I know what that means. You're going to see new revelations. You're going to see new insights. You're going to learn more about God, more about Jesus, more about the Holy Spirit, more about yourself. Yes, you're going to learn more about yourself. And you're going to be willing to, oh, you're going to be like those people in in Nehemiah's days. You're going to say, oh, I didn't know that. But you're going to be willing to do it because you have that hunger and that thirst. And the Bible said, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be filled. So take time out and read this word of God. And pray and ask Lord to give you understanding of it. And he will do just what you ask him to do. I'll see you again next time.